straight away now to our expert original thinking commentator who is with me for the rest of the program and who has prescient immersive analysis covering the range of issues discussed on the show today and for this i'm joined now in the studio by the journalist political affairs commentator and a rise news analyst dr constance ikoku thank you so much for coming in delighted to be here was it me you were introducing <laughs> <laughs> I almost didn't recognize myself. Well, I, I certainly <laughs> recognize the, the introduction. But let's start with Mikey Guinea, who is a former resident electoral commissioner for INEC. He was here earlier. And on the back of what's happened in Oshun State, he's trying to reassure people th about the, the, um, the, the efficacy of the technology that's being used, the Beavers and the IREV. Were you reassured? Absolutely. He was excellent. You know, he took his time, blow by blow, detailed explanation. The man sounded like he knew what he was talking about. Mm. He, he's experienced, very passionate and really impressive, mm. really impressive. And he seemed to sort of, you know, give the impression that all is well. So what we are facing now is human errors, mm. you know. But one thing that struck me from everything that he was talking about was the, the laws, the provisions that were enacted. He said only about 40 out of 91 provisions that were tendered to the National Assembly mm. have been passed. And there have been resistance from politicians over so many years. It tells you that, you know, we still have a long way to go. Mm. And it seems that the politicians themselves do not want a transparent, functional, working, uh, you know, credible system. That means everyone really has to fight this. Mm. You know, it, it's basically they're playing with our democracy and with the country. Absolutely. And that's the point he made as well, that this has to be, that's why he put up that pyramid, that there's got to be the input, the determination of everyone to make sure that that democracy I is preserved. And... Um, there have been calls, for example, for the conduct of penetration tests, mock simulation exercises using beavers and IREV. I, I know they talked about doing um, uh, sort of mock exercises and so on. Because of the volume of information exchange, the sort of the, all, all the processing of data, the transmission and so on that would need to take place in a national election. So when you've got this problem, happening i mean in in oshun state you start to worry about what's going to happen on the national level yes i was worried when i was looking at the pyramid and mm. what he was um explaining it sounded a bit complicated so you see the powers leaving the federal capital territory to the grassroots mm. the bottom and in that in in those places he also explained that most of those people are temporary. Mm. They are not permanent staff, so they are trained. They might, you know, get a hang of things, mm. or they might, they may not get the hang of things. It means that, you know, we have to be careful because the elections are becoming highly litigious. Mm. We're becoming a really, really litigious country where the courts are now deciding the results of elections. They are no longer decided at the ballot boxes mm. or at the polls. You know, it shouldn't be that. It should be that once you leave the election, uh, the polls, or, you know, once, once you cast your ballot, when INEC uh, releases the results, everything should be fine. So that is what we should be working towards as a country. Absolutely. Let's move away from that to Terva Akase, who was the special advisor to Governor Autumn on media and publicity. He was reacting to the interview we had on Friday with Professor Usman Yusuf, in which he called um, the governor of uh, Benue State the most irresponsible governor in Nigeria because of the law, or the anti-grazing law that, that he suggests was enacted by um, Governor Autumn. And very robust response there from um, Terva Akase. Yes, everything is context. I think we should be doing things in contest. Um, you look back in 2021, um, 17 governors of the South decided that they were going to ban open grazing. Mm. Why is that? There was a journey before we got there. There had been senseless wanton killings for so many years. You could make a perfectly reasonable argument that the herders, they're also being, you know, cattle rustled and they're also f facing dangers. At the same time, the farmers are being attacked. 
and you know whole villages were raced down and you wake up in the morning old women that have no guns to protect themselves are wailing whole families completely wiped out and this was not tenable in addition to that it didn't seem like the federal government was mood, moving the needle as in looking for solutions mm. or permanent long-term solutions to this issue so the governors had to decide we need to do something about this because the citizens of their states were asking questions and pushing them to do something eventually not all the states enacted open grazing mm. some did some did not but we were coming from somewhere the other thing is that when all this was happening there were reports that some of these herders were coming from outside the country and actually may be terrorists and not herders because in this country we have lived you know for centuries with Fulani headsmen traveling from one point of the country to the other peacefully no problems all of a sudden within some years mm. you had you know hordes and gangs of people coming in, into the country with, with guns machetes you know killing people so what is the actual problem yeah. you know, it is seemed it, untypical ex exactly mm. so is it politically motivated you had reports that you know some politicians right. brought in people to use during elections and then after the elections they had to survive they had to do something and then the kidnapping started and then the ransom and then the making money it became a business what do you expect people to do so there are sympathies on both sides on both camp but it looks like everybody's tone deaf nobody was wanted to hear each other right and then the federal government the language they used when they were trying the solution the right. cattle colony that was suggested mm. the language the style the lack of proper communication right it filled okay. an already problematic situation dr constance ikoku arrives news analyst journalist political affairs commentator always a pleasure to have you in here thank you very thank much you. indeed that's it for this edition of Arise Prime Time. Join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja. Bye bye and thank you for watching.